Hey, this is Tony with Salt Strong, and I have just recently posted a video on how I like to set up my kayak for inshore fishing. And what I want to do in this video is just go through some of the questions that came in on our YouTube channel. Uh, it's tough for us to usually get to our YouTube comments. We have a ton of comments that we answer on our main website. Uh, that's where we mainly answer our questions so if you do have questions about a video I highly recommend going to our main site and view the full article and you can actually comment on the bottom of that article and we actually get a notification when a comment comes in so we can answer your question there and also if you haven't done so already be sure to check out our Salt Strong Insider Club where you pretty much have direct access to me uh, Wyatt, Luke, Joe, all of our fishing coaches so if you have any questions you can ask us directly or you can post on our community page where you'll get a really good answer from you know the 13 plus thousand members that we have on there that are willing to help you out so definitely be sure to check that out so the video here again this is the uh, video that I put out on how I like to set up my kayak for inshore fishing there were a few questions that came in and I'm gonna go ahead and go through and answer some of these questions so first question was about the seat pad that I have on my kayak uh, that uh, seat pad that I have is what they call a sand dollar seat it's from Yak Gear I found it on clearance uh, just to test it out because the seat on my kayak after sitting a while and pedaling uh, gets a little bit uncomfortable so having some sort of cushion on there would definitely help but that one in particular I found didn't work out very well it was actually stiffer than the actual seat um, the mesh on the seat that I was sitting on so don't recommend that if you do get something I would recommend something that's uh, either gel or like a memory foam and is also uh, waterproof or water resistant so you don't have a soggy seat all day uh, so just as far as that question goes again wouldn't recommend the one I have try to find something with either memory foam or gel now the next question here is from Brad Hatch and it's about the mounts that I use to hold my anchor pin uh, they are paddle uh, holders they're not really made for the anchor pin and the reason I like using them is because my anchor pin can just lay into them it doesn't necessarily grip onto them because it has a wider opening that's typically for holding your paddle so I basically just lay it in there when I'm out fishing I could quickly grab it and I don't have to worry about making uh, too much noise and if I need to strap it down what I do is use those night eyes gear ties they're like metal ties with a rubber coating on them and you can tie down uh, the actual anchor pin either to a rail that may be under like on my Hobie Outback I have that H rail I can you know use that tie wrap it around the uh, anchor pin and also the bar or the rail and that'll keep it secure so it doesn't fall out if you know um, uh, transporting the kayak or anything like that now the next question comes from Hydra Yak Outdoors and any issues with the anchor trolley leaking and I'm sure he's referring to you know when you have to drill holes into the kayak and putting the screws in if you have any issues with leaking there I've never noticed any issues with that uh, I always seal every hole I make uh, with marine grade silicone I'll put it on the actual screw and also squeeze a little bit onto the hole and then tighten down any of the hardware and that will definitely help with any leaks also the anchor trolley is mounted above the water line so that will definitely help uh, you never want to mount anything on your kayak below the water line because that just uh, is asking for trouble with water leaks so keep that in mind now the next question is from Ramsey L. I see this question has come up a lot on this video and it's about the bed extender that I'm using to transport the kayak. Now I use the T-Bone bed extender made by Boondocks USA. Uh, it's made out of aircraft grade aluminum so it's very lightweight and very strong. I believe it holds up to 300 or 400 pounds of weight on it but what I did was I did a little bit of modifying to it to sort of make a uh, a rack that comes off of it made out of PVC pipe that the kayak can lay on in my truck bed and if you want to check that out I have actually put together a video for that uh, showing you know that setup so definitely be sure to check that out we'll have a link down below now our next question comes from John Yanari this is a question about the paddle is it a standard length or slightly longer since I am on a sit on top Hobie 
Uh, it's a pretty long paddle. It's 250 centimeters, so uh, I would really recommend either 250 or above if you're fishing from a sit on top that you can stand in. You know, kayaks that you can stand in are going to be very wide. Also, the fact that you're sitting up higher, you need a longer paddle because if the paddle is too short, you're going to notice you may start bumping into the sides of the kayak. You may start hitting your rod holder, and it's just not as efficient. So make sure you go. I would go with a longer paddle rather than a shorter paddle. The paddle that actually came with the Hobie is way too short. I'm not sure why, I'm not sure what they did there, and it's a really short paddle for that kayak. So if you do have this type of Hobie, the 2019 Outback or the 2020, I would highly recommend at least a 250, and if you're a little bit taller, around six foot, go with that 260 centimeter uh, kayak paddle. Now the next question that came in was from Ryan Polak. Is the gulp bait on board specifically for sight fishing? Uh, no, it, it is not. However, I do like to use it for sight fishing. Uh, it really depends on where I'm at. If the water's really dirty, it's hard to sight fish and I'll just blind cast. Uh, but one thing I do like about gulp for sight fishing is that, uh, you know, that scent it has. When you're sight fishing for fish, Usually when you start retrieving your lure, you're going to spook fish. Uh, you know, when that line starts to move, that's usually the first thing the fish feels and sees. So if you have something that has a good amount of scent on it, especially for redfish because they rely heavily on scent, they're more of a scavenger feeder as opposed to an ambush predator like snook and trout are, they will still ambush prey, but they rely heavily on scent. So that's why I like to use gulp when I am sight fishing because, you know, you can just let it sit there and just slowly drag it. They'll pick up on that movement, but they'll also pick up on the scent, which can definitely help. Now, next up is a question about the camera that I use from Matt T. Uh, it's super clear. <laughs> yeah, that's a GoPro uh, Hero 7 that I'm using as a head cam. And then I have a Hero 5 that I use in front of me on my kayak when I'm taking pictures or uh, videos facing me. So both are GoPros and yeah, they are very clear, but a good tip to uh, consider when you're using a GoPro or any type of camera on the water is to make sure your lens is clean. You know, you're constantly splashing around uh, early morning. You may get some, you know, condensation on the lens or fog it might fog up. Keep a nice dry, clean rag with you, you know, keep it in the hatch of your, um, kayak or wherever you can to keep it dry that way you know when you're about to start a video you can just wipe it really quick or when you're about to take a picture you can wipe it really quick because your pictures are only going to be as clear or your video is only going to be as clear as your lens so definitely keep that clean next up is do i have a fishing channel i do not this is it i post all my videos to salt strong uh, all the videos that i do are on here i have my own channel but it's more to you know answer questions on this channel i have posted some videos you know way back in the day when i first started doing videos to my page but i mainly use this page to post videos on so if you're looking for anything it's going to be right here and let's go to the next question Another one about the truck bed extender. Again, uh, be sure to check out that link down below for that video. Which kayak is is this that I have in the video? This is, again, this is a 2019 uh, Hobie Outback. And then uh, another question coming in from Frank Quintana: Power pole micro anchor versus anchor trolley for inshore fishing. This is a really good question. I have weighed the pros and cons of this for myself. The power pole micro anchor is basically an electric uh, anchor pin that you would mount on the back of your kayak. And the issue I have with that is that you're pretty much stuck in one position when you when you anchor down. So you know if you're going up current, you're working up against the current or up against the wind, you see some fish and you anchor down, your kayak's gonna swing and now you're facing the opposite direction. The thing I like about the anchor trolley is that you can anchor down and then you can slide that anchor trolley either to the front or to the rear. That way you can uh, basically choose which way you want to face while you keep your anchor in the water just by pulling on the anchor trolley. So that is the main reason why I go with the anchor trolley. The only real benefit of the electric power pole micro anchor is that you know it, it's quick to deploy. You can have the remote around your neck. If you need to stop really quick, you just push it and you're you're pretty much anchored in place. Also with the power pole, 
Uh, you don't necessarily have to be in soft bottom with an anchor pin. You have to have soft bottom to push that anchor pin down into the water to hold in place. If you try to put it in hard bottom and it only goes down a couple inches, when you start to drift away, that power that uh, anchor pin is just going to fall over because it doesn't get stuck in the bottom. And the power pole, you know, it forces itself down and catches the bottom. It might not push in much, but it will catch the bottom and it will stay there so you can stay in place. So just some pros and cons there about the power pole uh, versus an anchor trolley with an anchor pin. Again, my preference is the anchor trolley. You're not adding more weight to your kayak and you know you don't have to worry about a battery or anything like that. So that looks like it's about it for the questions on this video. Again, just wanted to answer these in case uh, other people may have the same questions and they don't happen to see it uh, on the comment section of this video. And again, I highly recommend asking questions on our actual uh, Salt Strong page at saltstrong.com. We post full articles on every video we post on YouTube. So if you see the video here, we have an article on our main page about it and when questions get asked in that article we get a direct email and a notification so we can go through there and answer it and you'll definitely get some feedback that way also if you haven't done so already be sure to check out our insider club where you have direct access to us and we also have an inner circle group uh, which is an additional uh, membership to that where we do a live call every Thursday and it's a private call Everybody can get on there that's part of the inner circle group and ask questions live and we'll answer them live right then and there. So definitely be sure to check that out as well. So that will wrap up this video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.